Romans 14, verse 17 For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Taking Jesus as our Lord implies having Him as the only Master to whom we are willing to yield, both in season and out of season. Our faith in Christ is counterfeit if all we think about walking with God is eating and drinking and having our needs supplied. We cannot despise God's command for us to live righteously and the need for us to have a growing relationship with the Holy Spirit and still claim to be believers. God does not judge believers by face value or by their mere confession of Him, but much more by how they obey His commands. In John 14 verse 15, Jesus reiterates that if we love Him, we will keep His commandment. That is, God proves our love for Him by our level of obedience to Him. Meanwhile, we have several believers in our day who are pleased to have Jesus as their Savior but are not willing to take instructions from Him. Counterfeit Christians pursue God not because they love Him, but for the sake of their needs. Isaiah 29 verse 13 says, Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. This is one of the characteristics of counterfeit Christianity. People have the form of godliness, they are religious, but they deny the inner working of the Spirit in their lives. We practice counterfeit Christianity when we honor God with our lips, but our hearts are far from Him. God is not seeking for people who will profess His name and not obey His commands. God is not interested in Christians who will only study the Bible to search the good promises of God but rebuff His instructions and rebukes. But God has great interest in believers who have mutual relationship with Him. It is unfortunate that we have more Christians whose relationship with God are self-centered and need-oriented. True Christianity True Christianity is a life of complete and utter obedience. True Christianity is a life of complete and utter obedience to the Word of God. But unfortunately, we live in an age of eeny, meeny, miny, mo Christianity, where Christians pick and choose what they will or will not follow in the Word of God. But I want to encourage you, my brothers and sisters, allow your faith in Christ to one that completely follows the Word of God and not only follow the things that are convenient to you. Make a decision today that I will fully obey the Word of God. Make a decision today that I will not be involved in the cafeteria Christianity where I pick and choose what to be obedient in. Make a decision today that I will live a life of complete and total obedience to the Lord God Almighty. Allow me to ask you a simple question. Do you love the Lord Jesus Christ? Answer that question in your heart secretly. Do you love the Lord God Almighty with all of your heart and all of your soul? Answer that question in your mind. John 14 verse 15 if you love me, keep my commandments. The judge of the whole world says, If you love me, keep my commandments. Now I want your life to answer the question, Do you love God? With the way you live your life, do you love God? If your life could answer on your behalf, what would your life say? Would your life point at you and say, He loves the Lord with all his heart? Would your life point at you and say, She loves the Lord with all her heart? Or would your life say, No, no, he loves sexual immorality more than he loves God? Or would your life say, She loves adultery and fornication more than God? What would your life say about you? Let's not sugarcoat it. What would your life say about you? If you love me, 
Keep my commandments. God commands you to love your neighbor, and for those of us who are married, our nearest neighbor is our husband or wife. The person you are married to is your nearest neighbor. Do you love that person? Do you treat that person with kindness? Do you treat that person with compassion? Don't say you love God and yet you treat your husband or wife like garbage. God commands you to love your neighbor. Love that woman, even if she is difficult. Love that man, even if he is hard-headed. Love them for the glory of God. This is my commandment, that you love one another, that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another, that your joy may be full, that your joy may be full, that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another, that your joy may be full. Refuse to be a fake Christian to be a Christian by name only. I am tired of seeing people who profess to be Christians but spend their whole life tearing down other Christians. If you are a believer in the Jesus Christ of this Holy Bible, you are my brother, and my Bible commands me to love you, and I will do just that. In John 6 verses 25 to 26, Jesus rebuked some set of people who sought him from place to place. We would think that they loved him, but their motive was known to Jesus. These people sought for Jesus because they had previously benefited from the miracle he performed when he multiplied bread and fish a day before. Many believers are like this. They seek for Jesus just on the basis of what they would benefit from him. This is a very wrong way to relate with God. There is no relationship that is need-driven that will survive a long period of time. What is central to the heart of God is our relationship with Him. Do you love Him? Not because of what He can do for you, but do you love God for who He is? If our relationship with God is right, then our needs will be freely supplied too. The supply of our needs is supposed to be the reward of our right relationship with God. God wants us to live a holy life. He wants us to be good ambassadors of Him wherever we find ourselves. He wants us to be good believers in secret and in public places. He wants us to be obedient. <laughs>